this weekend, a new Evil Dead film drops in theaters. This gave me the perfect opportunity to finally watch through all of Ash vs. the Evil Dead. So today I'm going to stop and rank all three seasons of Ash vs. the Evil Dead from the least best to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the seasons of Ash vs. the Evil Dead. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list, and I would love to hear yours. And also, since I'm essentially brand new to the conversation surrounding Ash vs. the Evil Dead, I don't have any idea what the general consensus is of the ranking of the seasons, reviews of the show, or anything like that. I know people see, tend to really like it, but I don't really know which seasons are people like the best or anything like that. I don't know any specifics of that. Uh, actually, in sort of starting to research all of this, I found a quick clip from Bruce Campbell while, where he was talking about why the show got canceled and talked about how... Um, a lot of Evil Dead fans were excited about the show's existence, but didn't watch it because it was on stars. Well, that was me. I would tell people, hey, great news. We're bringing Evil Dead back as a series. Oh my God, Bruce, it's great news. What's going to be on? Stars. <laughs> what stars? Oh. <laughs> we got canceled because nobody knew that stars existed. Yeah. Then it goes to Netflix and people are like, Hey, Bruce, I didn't know Netflix was doing a new show. I didn't watch it because it was on stars. Like everybody else, I don't have stars. And so eventually uh, I watched a little bit of it when it first dropped on Netflix, but I got busy and there wasn't that urgent thing to get to watch it. Finally, I've watched all of it. I'm ready to have conversation about the series as a whole. And uh, if you're wondering, I have a new Evil Dead ranking over on my main channel. I don't remember if this will come out first or if that one will come out first, don't know which, but over on my main channel, new updated ranking of that this weekend with the new movie and let's get started. Coming in in the least best place, season two. And one of my feelings about this show is that every episode is fun and enjoyable, but I, I don't know that a television show is the best context for this specific character and franchise simply because the advantage of a TV show is that you can have more complex stories and bigger character arcs. And when you think Evil Dead, you don't think, man, complex stories and you don't really want Ash to grow all that much. The fun of him is his immaturity and absurdity. And season two is where they, the novelty of just more Ash doing his thing with some sidekicks, they're moving beyond just that, and they're trying to do more of the TV show stuff, so kind of diving into the character of Ash. And so season two brings in his father, it brings in the town's, reception of him what's his reputation if if the events of the original truly happened 30 years ago the guy goes back home what do people think about him and that's kind of an interesting thought of wait everyone would think he killed all of his friends and it adds a layer of like reality into a pretty ridiculous absurd franchise that you, you don't really think about and then, of course, adding in Ash's dad, you kind of like, where does this personality of Ash, the over the top bravado machoism come from? Oh, it comes from his dad. All that said, um, I don't know that I felt it was done all that well in this season. Uh, like, I wasn't sitting around wondering, like, I wonder what Ash's relationship with his father is like. I, I wasn't a question I ever asked in the 20 five plus years I've been into this franchise. I never asked that question. I wonder where that bravado comes from. I, I bet it's from his, his broken relationship with his father. You know, never really thought that. And so I don't know that it it benefited. The actor they brought in was Lee Majors. Um, th th I thought he was you know, great at playing this even more obnoxious Ash-esque character that created the Ash that we know and love. But uh, I just don't know that it served it in, in a certain sense. And in particular, the way that they play out the relationship with the father of there's is they're they're building this theme of everyone that he loves dies. And so they keep playing that out, that they always die. He can't save them. He's the one that always lives. But I, I think it also means that as soon as there's something interesting that happens with his relationship with his father. You know where that's headed. 
And it felt like we're missing things because of that, things that would have been more interesting or satisfying. Also, by the end of it, we keep going back to the cabin. Now, the idea of time traveling back to before the events of the first two films, that's kind of interesting, an interesting take on it. But because the first season already had us go back to the cabin, it was a little bit of like, once again, we're going back to the cabin. We're here again. It's happening. And so it felt a little bit like we're rehashing things a little bit. So for me, season two is where I felt the flaws of doing weekly Ash the most of it started to wear itself out a little bit on me. It started to be like, all right, I don't need this much Ash. <laughs> um, I, I like to have a little bit more of a pause between my Ash. And I felt that during season two uh, the most. But like I said, I still enjoyed it. I still had fun with it. And there's some stuff in here that was like, I cannot believe you did it. In particular, I think it was episode two where they go to the morgue. Wow. <laughs> they, they go for it. Go for it hard in, in this one. Uh, so there's a lot of things in there that um, were a lot of fun. So outrageous. Oh, yeah. I, like, I wasn't crazy about putting the Necronomicon on Pablo. There's several things like that that I just didn't. I didn't buy into as much. And once again, if you're doing weekly episodes and you have to keep expanding the lore, find excuses to have the characters have something interesting and different with them happen with a story that's designed to be pretty bare bones and basic with a lead character that doesn't really grow and change and isn't supposed to have a bunch of layers. I think it means you start to do more and more outrageous things with the other characters. And I wasn't as crazy about a lot of that, so. Our runner up, but also kind of tied for first season one. Felt like season one was more consistent than season three, but the highs of three, season three were higher than the highs of season one, but the lows of season three were also lower than the lows of season one. But whatever, here's my thoughts on season one. A surprisingly good continuation of Evil Dead all those years later. Over 20 years later, they brought back Ash as a TV show, and it felt like it really captured the character and the tone just right. And in many ways, it goes, it, it, it's its own thing because it's the version of Ash from Army of Darkness, but it's a lot more the tone of Evil Dead 2. But also, it's an aging action hero of sorts. There's sidekicks. It's set in a city. It's very much its own thing, but pulling from and capturing the tone of the vibe of classic Raimi Evil Dead really, really well. And some of that is right out of the gate. Raimi was involved in the production, in writing, directing to set things right from the get go. He did that and it felt like that they nailed it. And in particular, who would Ash, who is Ash in the real world? In particular, if all that stuff happened to him 25 years ago, where is he at as he's a aging man? How does that personality translate the sleaziness and all of it? And you get that to play out here, the, the, the subtle misogyny and racism and stuff, and that they're allowed, they went for it. They, they, actually have all of these jokes who are like, whoa, he, he, they actually allowed their lead character to say that. They went for it. Okay. That it was refreshing to have just like such a crass, harsh show that's just having fun being inappropriate. And right out of the gate, they nailed that and they were to run it throughout the entire season. The thing that surprised me is how much I actually really like Pablo and Kelly, where they bring in these side characters and you're like, ah, yeah, we're going to bring in some new characters, but really Ash is the star. But quickly you, you buy into the relationship where they, the dynamic, the chemistry, it all, it all worked and it fit with Ash and Bruce Campbell's sense of humor and everything. And so kind of dug it. And then as you kind of go through it, they are able to expand on some mythology a little bit, go back to some locations in some ways. It was like, that was cool that you were able to do that. That was all right. That was, that was kind of nice. Um, I don't know if you're trying to think like what kind of held this one maybe back from that number one spot. I, one and three. I really I was going back and forth as to which one to put on top. Uh, it wasn't a clear three or anything like that. Um, but I, I think season one, I think maybe for budget reasons or just because they're kicking things off felt kind of fan fiction-y just in the scope and size of what they were doing. It felt uh, like very small that feels 
fan fiction. He just happens to be starring Bruce Campbell. And so some of that kind of limitations of the budget and production made it feel smaller. And then the other one, when you're inciting incident, you're just leaning so hard into man, Ash is an idiot. Like, oh man, he was smoking weed and drinking with a girl and tried to impress her. And, and that's what led to all of this. Um, that's not very interesting to me. And so, so there's a couple things like that. that was like, ah, I wish I wish I get it. I get it. But that's not the most compelling explanation as to why this whole show is unfolding is because Ash is an idiot. <sighs> And not in a way that's like is like Ash forgetting words and getting cocky about it versus Ash just being a total moron. Not as interesting to me. So a little bit of that kind of trying to decide which one's on top, which one's not. But I didn't I don't really care that much about it. I just have to pick one to be on top and one not. Um, just a, a nice follow up delivered more Ash on a weekly basis. And it's it's true Ash. It's like really him doing his thing. And a lot of it, that's cool. Like, there's so much Ash fighting with a chainsaw hand. There's so many one-liners. There's so many just of the inappropriate comments. There's so much of all the stuff you want. that It's, it's almost too much because it's just weekly. Yeah, it's more Ash. This is cool. Coming in in first place, though, I'm going to go with season three. And it's really the back half of season three is what elevated this one to the top of the list. The first half, I felt, had the flaws of season two of I wasn't quite buying into oh, Ash has a daughter and Ash's connections. to all. I, I wasn't fully buying into it. And then when you moved into the back half, it felt like the plot really kind of kicked in. And the show kind of found itself and was able to kind of go bigger, more extravagant, have Ash grow enough without losing himself that it, it felt like it really was going for it and paying some things off in ways that were cool. That's for me what kind of elevated this one. It kind of did a better version of season two. It had all the cool stuff of season one, but it resolved kind of that that fan fiction -y vibe, whatever that was that I kind of felt during season one fixed that. And it goes so big at the end of the season where it just big, wild, crazy cliffhanger ending that is very fun in an evil dead Two army of darkness kind of way that it, it just pulled it all together for me. It just, it, it, it hit emotional beats that I don't expect from evil dead things. It while still having Ash doing his thing, the humor, the jokes, giving, um, you know, Kelly off on a mission of revenge and getting her own awesome moments. But because she's on a mission of revenge driven by rage, she's not being very wise in what she's doing. Like there's just a lot of different things that like I got latched into the story at the back half of this season, more so than any of the other ones. Previous two and a half seasons, it was fun week to week, but I didn't feel like I got sucked into the story. Maybe that's the way to phrase it. Whereas here, when you start, like things really started to go down, I was like, oh man, what's going to happen next? That kind of edge of your seat, binging through it. That's what it felt. Finally got a hold of that in the back half of season three. That's why to me, it was the best and uh, d just did some cool stuff. Took it to this whole other level. Um, Taking the mythology, getting weirder, wackier, heroic sacrifices. And they're, they're all like, especially from Army of Darkness, you started getting these tropes of action movies and blockbusters. And this continues that in season three of literally going into the afterlife to pull people back from the dead and things like that. That, you know, I didn't know that I wanted that from Evil Dead, but I got it finally in season three of the show. So uh, that was for me the thing that kind of what I really dug about season three. I said at the beginning, I was like, okay, another family member, another um, thing revealed. Okay, I, I guess it makes sense that he would probably have some, okay. But that they found a way to make it work, as especially as the season went along and then ending with, uh, especially as it turned out to be a series finale, a great little appropriate Ash cliffhanger, him in a wild setting. I'm down for it. So it comes in 
and number one. Let me know your ranking down below in the comment section, your thoughts on the show in general. Like I'm new to the conversation, so I'm trying to share all my kind of thoughts in one video. Uh, so, I, but I, I don't know the general consensus on the show, the seasons, the finale, any of that stuff. Also, um, I don't know. I think it's going to come out tomorrow. I think this video is coming out Friday. I think my Evil Dead ranking is going to drop tomorrow on the main channel. Maybe they're going to drop on the same day. All that to say, over on my main channel, there will be a new updated ranking of the entire Evil Dead franchise with the movies and the show. Check that out over there this weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.